Hey, how you doing? It's Robin here from Win With Robin. Stop scrolling. Yeah, stop. Listen to me. Okay, it's Friday. Um, Friday morning for some of you, Friday afternoon for me. And I am so glad to have a little bit of time to sit down and make a video. There are too many people throwing business and money at me. I can hardly cope with it. I know it's uh, a problem that not everybody has, and I am grateful, but uh, it's really nice to have a Friday, a fun Friday that I can devote to the things I want to do. My son, my teenage son, has a birthday this weekend, and I can't believe that one year from now, I'll be teaching him to drive. So that is a sobering thought. Now, one of the reasons I think that I'm quite busy is that I really believe in going the extra mile. I've always, always believed in that. And I know it's a well-worn marketing cliche, but I want to give you a true story uh, from one of my uh, my clients who is has become a really good friend of mine. And this is a true story of um, how going the extra mile can actually really benefit you. Now, this friend of mine, he had a, a, a lumber business. Um, he had a sawmill and uh, you know, it was a family business. He'd inherited it. And uh, we'll, we'll call him Jim. It's not his real name, but uh, Jim inherited this uh, business. And you know, in the highlands of Scotland where I live, running your own business, uh, your bricks and mortar business can be really tough because there are just not enough people around. And so it is hard going. And he, you know, he was trying lots and lots of different things to uh, to bring an extra revenue. And he signed up to uh, to become an agent, the first agent in Scotland for a Canadian log cabin uh, business. And now these 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 things were really really expensive. I mean, they were, you know, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars for what was basically, you know, in my mind, just a glorified shed. Now, I love sheds. I have got a very fancy shed in my garden. That is the, the envy of all my friends. But at the end of the day, a shed is just a shed. And mine is just full of stuff now. So, you know, I just was very, very skeptical when he told me that he uh, was going to do this. And I thought, well, fine. Go right ahead, Jim, knock yourself out, but don't expect to get a lot of business in this part of the world. People are too practical to spend that kind of money on, on something that, you know, it, it's just too fancy for the west coast of Scotland. So shortly after that, he was closing up for a Friday. It was just like today. He was closing up for the Friday night. He, he his, his house is very close to the sawmill that, that he owns. So he was just getting ready to go home, have a nice meal with his family, when the phone rang. And this guy started asking him questions about fence posts. Now, fence posts was not a huge part of Jim's business. Uh, he, he used to uh, occasionally do that, but you know he was bulk, bulk uh, orders. He was much bigger business than, than, than just a few hundred fence posts. But he took the call and he he listened to the guy. Now they spoke. Hi, Sean. How are you doing? Good to see you today. He spoke to this guy on the phone for half an hour or so, teaching him about the right kinds of wood to buy for a fence post. The kind of wood that Happy Friday to you, Sean. He he told him about the right kinds of wood that would withstand the the rigors of uh, West Coast Scotland weather. He told him about the right kind of wood that you can stay and you can preserve it, the right kind of wood that won't get nibbled by deer and other animals. And he really went into detail teaching this guy about all the different kinds of wood that you could use to make fence posts. And they chatted for more than half an hour by this time. And the guy was you know, still very, very keen. And my friend jo uh, Jim was thinking, well, this call is going on a bit longer than I expected. I'm going to be late for my family meal now. But hey, you know, if I can sell two or three hundred fence posts, that's that's worth my time. So they talked and they talked and they talked. And an hour and a half later, yes, 
By this time, he had missed his family meal. 90 minutes later, this guy said, well, Jim, yeah, you've convinced me. I, I'm going to order from you. Uh, you sound like you know what you're doing, and I, I trust your, your experience and your knowledge. So John was reaching for his calculator at this point, thinking, great, this is worthwhile. And the guy said, yes, I can safely say I'm going to go for large. That's the, what I want to go for, and I'll take a fence post. And my friend said, he, you could have knocked him off his chair with a feather. One fence post. He, he could hardly speak. And, and, but he did say, thank you, I will do that. The guy said, I want to pick up the fence post tonight, if possible. So Jim's like, okay, fair enough. I'll go and get one uh, produced for you myself from my sawmill, and I'll see you in an hour's time. So he went out kicking the walls and fuming to himself that he'd spent all this time to sell one fence post, probably not even 20 bucks worth. But when the guy arrived, he showed him around his sawmill. He showed him the, the, the workshop. He showed him the showroom where he had these fancy Canadian log cabins that he had just signed up to sell. And he showed him all of this, and the guy left with his one fence post. John went back to his house and his, his wife said to him, where have you been? Why are you so late? He said, well, I'm selling a fence post. And yeah, his wife gave him that look and shook her head and uh, that he was in the doghouse for the rest of the night. The next day, this guy came back again and bought a $70,000 log cabin purely on the basis of what my friend had said to him on the phone when he was buying a fence post. So sometimes, guys, with your online business, you might just be selling a $7 product. You might be doing a lot of work, you think, uh, for a very small amount of money. I'm an author. I also uh, write thrillers. My books are only 2 or $3 at best online. So yeah, I, I, know, I know how it feels. And most uh, online marketing, you start very, very low price and, and you think, how am I ever going to make money by doing this? But if you treat all your customers the way my client Jim treated that customer, if you spend time with them, if you go the extra mile, you'd be surprised what might happen. Now he he never expected to do this and you know that seventy thousand, eighty thousand dollar log cabin, that was one of the biggest sales he'd ever made in his life. And it was just by going the extra mile. So if you think that you're not going to make it online and you're wasting your time with tiny little small sales, think again, okay? Treat every customer as if they are going to buy an $80,000 product off you and who knows what might happen, okay? So go the extra mile and have a fun weekend. I'm going out on my bike if it stops raining here in the west coast of Scotland. A fun weekend. Go the extra mile. When you're going to do it, do it for real and I will see you next time. Great, guys. Bye-bye.